You know, one of those phrases that we come across in the Word of God as we're reading is the fear of the Lord. What does it mean to be a God-fearing man or a God-fearing woman? There's lots of different answers to that question. One of the simplest, I think, is found in Proverbs where Solomon tells us the fear of the Lord is to depart from evil. And one of my favorites is where he says the fear of the Lord is actually the beginning of wisdom. Uh, later on in Proverbs, Solomon is telling a young man, he says, My son, do not let your heart envy sinners, but be zealous, be desirous of the fear of the Lord all the day long, for surely there is a hereafter, and your hope will not be cut off. Now, the fear of the Lord can be said to be walking uprightly. That's what David says in Psalm 19, where he says, The fear of the Lord is what he calls it. He says, The fear of the Lord is clean. It endures forever. And this is also found where he talks about the law of the Lord, the statutes of the Lord, the commandments of the Lord, the judgments of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is, comes from the scriptures. So we learn that it's by the word of God that we learn the fear of the Lord. And there's another aspect of the fear of the Lord that I don't think is often pointed out, and that's from Isaiah. Isaiah tells us that the fear of the Lord, it's like a special treasure that God has reserved for his people. It's a great, great gift. It's reserved for them. And they of all people on the face of the earth receive this treasure. God fills their hearts with the very thing by which all other gifts come. Isaiah also says that wisdom and understanding and peace and satisfaction and life belong to those who fear the Lord. So if the fear of the Lord brings all these other blessings, shouldn't we be praying for this wonderful gift? Shouldn't this be the one thing that we desire? You know, we, we can also say that Jesus is the one through whom the fear of the Lord comes. The scriptures tells us that he himself feared God. We see that in Hebrews 5 verse 7. It's ultimately at the cross where we see why we should fear God. The thief on the cross understood this when he said to the other thief, Do you not even fear God, seeing that we're under the same condemnation, and we indeed justly, but this man has done nothing wrong. As you read the scriptures, start to look at how many references there are to, I think, a really important subject for us. And there's a couple of helpful books um, that I would also recommend by John Bunyan, The Fear of God, and then another book by Jerry Bridges, also called The Fear of God. And then John Murray, we're going through his Redemption Accomplished and Applied on Tuesday mornings. He's got a helpful article on the subject as an appendix to a, a book called Principles of Conduct that's very helpful to this. So I would pray that the Lord would grant all of us this special treasure which he has reserved for us to have a reverent, a healthy fear of the Lord. And I would pray that God would teach us what it means to fear him every day that we live. And just one other note uh, for this week. Tonight, we're continuing the uh, study at small group uh, in the book of Nehemiah. That's at seven o'clock here at the church with Kayla Maka. Um, on Thursday is the ladies uh, prayer group at three o'clock. And then this Sunday, we're having Rob Hollis uh, come back uh, to preach um, from Ephesians chapter three. We're just thrilled about that. Um, also, be watchful for a handful of announcements about different uh, small groups and discipleship groups that we're hoping will start um, over the next month or two. Um, so with that being said, we're looking forward to seeing you all on Sunday. The Lord bless you this week and take care.